Today is uh, the third Sunday in the Advent liturgical calendar, and this is the Sunday that traditionally Christians have acknowledged the theme of joy. This is the Sunday in Advent where we acknowledge that we have many reasons to be joyful and to rejoice. And one of the many reasons that we have to be joyful is that we know the end of the story. We know our final destination beyond the age in which we currently currently live. This age, this present age, is not our final destination. This present age does not get to have the last word. And if we truly believe that, if we focus on that, if that is at, on the, the forefront of our minds on a regular basis, then the things of this age cannot and will not rob you of joy. Let me give you a, a silly example from my own personal life this week. My wife and I had the opportunity to uh, buy a house recently. We just closed this week, and as you can imagine, I was very excited. <clears throat> However, one of my least favorite tasks on planet Earth, literally my, one of my least, least favorite things to do is to move. I hate moving. Maybe I'm the only one, but that's how I feel. It just feels like for days leading up to the move, you're, you're living kind of in a, in a, in a un, you know, partially packed house and partially organized, but some things are in boxes and some things aren't. It's kind, of, it's kind of a mess. Things are everywhere and, and not quite where they ought to be. And then you've got to load and unload a truck, which can be physically and emotionally exhausting. And then for days after the move, it seems like you're living out of boxes and you're trying to figure things out and, and you're trying to settle in. It just seems like a big old mess. The, the in-between season from the time you start packing and to the time your, your home was settled in and you are, you are actually enjoying your new house. That, that season just seems way longer than I ever want it to be. It seems very cumbersome and quite annoying. I've already, I already own the home, but, but I'm not quite at a place where I'm fully enjoying that which has been purchased. But you know what transcends the season of annoyance? The, the days of frustration when I'm moving? What transcends that is looking forward to the moment where we are fully enjoying the new home. <clears throat> that, that moment trumps any hatred I have for moving. Knowing that there's going to come a moment where my family is going to enjoy a new home gives me joy and excitement. And that joy and excitement really gives me strength to go through the process of moving, no matter how aggravating it may seem. But what if I had lost sight of that? What if, rather than thinking about the new home we're going to enjoy, what if all I thought about was how messy our apartment has been for the last few weeks? And how frustrating it was to, to feel unorganized the last few days. If I, thought nothing, if I thought about nothing other than that, I, quite frankly, would probably get a little bit cranky. But if I continue to remind myself that there's a greater thing to come, well, I can endure the current moment. You see, if all I focused on was a messy apartment, I would lose sight of the fact that I am moving into a newer, better home. But, rem but the reminder that I have a newer and better home, the reminder that I will enjoy this thing with my family, births in me joy and excitement, and it inspires me to go through the process of moving that I hate. That's the Christian life in a lot of ways. I, I think the, the process of moving illustrates to me the temptations I frequently face in this life. We are so frequently tempted to focus on our problems and the pains we face in this age as if this age gets to have the final word, but it doesn't. If we lose sight of the grand thing God has in store for us in the future, we will lose our joy. This is one of the reasons why the biblical authors help us to see that God has a grander thing in store for us in the future. We see this in Revelation 21, the passage that Pastor Kevin just read a moment ago. The Apostle John says that he saw a new heaven and a new earth. The Apostle John follows it up in verse 4 when he tells us that Jesus will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And then in verse 5, Jesus proclaims, I make all things new. All things will be restored. That's the end of the story. That's our final destination. All things will be renewed, and we will be with Jesus in a place where there's no crying, no pain, no pandemics, no riots, no injustice, no chaos, no toxic political environments. Church, we are headed for a place and a moment in eternity future where even death has been defeated. That's our final destination. That's the end of the story. Church, on this third Sunday of Advent, that is a reason to rejoice. No matter what we face in this life. The problem is we are often tempted to get our eyes off of the future hope and on the problems of this age. But if we truly believe we have a great future, if we truly believe that we are headed to a moment in time where all tears have been wiped away and even death is defeated, if we know that is our final destination, then we ought to allow that to be the source of our joy no matter what we face. Church, my exhortation to you this morning is this. Allow your knowledge of the final destination, allow that knowledge to be the source of joy as you live on this earth as we await the new earth. Would you pray with me? Father, forgive us. We have so often lost sight of our hope in Christ and the future that awaits us. We have so often been fixated on the problems and our current pain in this age. We've allowed our current circumstances to often rob us of joy. Spirit of God, please help us to set our minds on things above. God, would you forgive us for being short-sighted at times, for refusing to see that we do indeed have many reasons to rejoice, that we do indeed have many reasons to be joyful. Oh God, would you bestow to us the grace and mercy we so desperately need. And lastly, God, this morning we acknowledge that we are sinners. We need your forgiveness. We need your grace. We need your mercy. So we pause now for a moment in this service, and we humbly confess our individual sins to you now.